Hey guys, it's John here, Sub-Zero Gaming, and today it's going to be part three of the 2D tutorial. We are going to create a moving platform, and to show you what that looks like, let's go ahead and demonstrate. So I can go up here, and you'll notice that we have a moving platform, and I can get on it, and I stay with it, I can walk, and I can jump off it. Alright, so that's what we're going to go and create today, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to go ahead and click on this, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go into my scripts here, and here's my moving platform script. I'm going to go and click that and delete that as well. Alright, so how would I go about creating a moving platform? Well, as you can see, I need to know where I want my moving platform to be, right? So, I want mine to be exactly where it just was. So, I'm just using uh, one of those you know, one of those uh, uh, sprites that came with it, one of the wood platforms here. So I'm just going to go and place that in the scene, give it the correct layer. All right, so here it is. And I want it to go from, let's go and strengthen, like lengthen it out, let's make it two. Okay. So looking at it, how do I want this to work? I need to know how I want it to work. So I want it to start here and go, say, all the way to here. So it's going to go from here, left and right, okay? Back and forth, left and right. So looking at this, I know that I need to know positions for it, right? How do I tell it to go from this position, which is what x, to this position, which is say x2? Um, so we need to create a method for how we can control it going back and forth. Um, and it's really simple to do that. Uh, in Unity, what is a position? A position is a vector 3, right? And a position property is part of the transform of a game object. So if I need to know when it's time to stop and go back, I need to know if I'm at the correct positions or not. So what we can do is we can create basically, let's create a starting position and an end position, so like an origin and a destination. Um, so looking at this, I want my origin to be right here. That looks good for me. So I'm just going to go and duplicate that. This one's going to be called origin. And this one's going to be called destination. And I want it to go from there. Oh, hold on, I want to keep it in the same zero there. I want it to be the same height. Okay, let's go ahead and command over. All right, and I want it to go to here. So this is the origin here. This is the destination that I want to be at. All right. So now what I need to do is I need basically how can I make this work? What am I doing here? So let's go ahead and create another one of these that's going to act as the actual platform. So go ahead and create that, duplicate it, and rename it to moving platform. And this platform here is going to be used as the actual platform. Um, basically we're going to assign uh, this in the script, we're going to tell it what positions it needs to go to. So we're going to say go from this position to here and then back. So to make this look more real, because you, you can't really, we don't want to see these other two platforms, right? Go ahead and click on the origin and just simply remove, uh, disable the sprite render and click on the destination and do the same thing. And what do you notice? I, they're still there, but now, you know, now we just need to make it through code work. So we're going to use those two origin and destinations as a position for our moving platform to go to and from. So let's go ahead and create a new C Sharp script and name it moving platform. All right, and you're going to attach it to the moving platform in the scene. And there's a few things we need to discuss. So we know we have an origin and a destination, right? Those are game objects. And what are game objects? They're transforms, right? And they hold a position uh, property that we can access. So go ahead and create two variables that are going to hold transforms and you're going to have one for the origin and then you're also going to have one for the destination. So if you go and save that and go back to uh, Unity and add that script to the moving platform. So look what it says here, origin destination. Just go ahead and drop in the origin game object which is invisible and the destination which is invisible. And it's simple logic now. What do we want to do? We want to move it to the right. We want to go from origin to destination. And if the transform position of the moving platform equals the destination, 
we need to go to the origin. And if the transform position of the moving platform is origin, we need to go to the destination. So it's really, really, it's just simple logic. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up the moving platform and let's discuss what we need to do. So basically, what's the logic for if we're there? So if transform position, right, which is this game object, which is the moving platform, if transform position equals um, origin, then we need to say move to destination. And then we have another one that says if uh, if transform position equals destination, move to destination, uh, move to origin. Sorry, move to origin. So this should be pretty simple. Let's go ahead and just fill in the first if statement, um, the pseudocode for it. Just fill it in. It's an if statement. And then if transform dot position, right? Because that gets the position of our game object. And let's actually go ahead and cache our transform. Private transform. My transform. And then my transform equals this dot transform. All right, because we don't need to look it up every time. So we're going to go and cache that. And what we can do is we can go ahead and say uh, my transform dot position, which is the current game objects that this script is attached to, which is the moving platform. If my transform dot position is equal to the origin, right, which is origin transform dot position. So there you go, origin dot position. Then what do you want to do? We want to take the current position and move to the destination, which would be destination dot position. So how can we do that? And you might think you could do probably transform dot translate to the right, and then you know check to see if it's there. And transform not translate to the left. Well, that's actually not the most efficient way to do that. So let's go ahead and research how I could do that. Open up Google here and just say, um, you know, uh, here, how to create a moving platform. And here you go, you need the answers. What do we got? So you'll see here a bunch of code jumbo. Okay, so looking at what this guy's doing, just make a script to move the platform. The first person can control prefab would cover the moving platforms. If you jump over a moving platform, okay, so this is pretty useless here. Um, okay, so they're doing some equations here. Doesn't have to be that difficult. Um, I don't like any of those. All right, let's go ahead and look at the scripting reference. So what do we want to do? We want to move our player, right? Which is anytime we're moving, what are we dealing with? We're dealing with the change in our position, right? And what's a position? A position is a vector 3. So let's go and look at the vector 3 class of unity and see what methods there are. All right, vector 3. So we have vector 3 dot right and vector 3 dot left, and we can do the transform, but there's definitely something better. Look at those static functions here. Um, okay, so we have lerp which linearly interpolates between two vectors, point A and B. The problem with doing lerp though, and I haven't really covered lerp in the past, but lerp slows down as it gets to the target destination. We don't really want it to slow down. We just want it to be a constant speed going from left to right. And here, look at this one here, move towards. Moves a point current in a straight line towards a target point. Doesn't that sound exactly like what we want to do? Uh, let's see, the value returned by this function is a point max distance delta closer to a target point along the line between current and target. And let's go ahead and look at the syntax for this. So they're saying their current position equals vector 3 dot move towards, and then it looks like you pass through a value, current position, destination position, and then the speed, how fast you want your moving platform to go. So let's go ahead and try that. So here, so if transfer dot position equals origin dot position, we want to say move to destination using uh, vector 3 dot move or move towards. So we're going to call our current position equals vector 3 move towards scripting reference size. And look at the tooltip, current target in a speed. So let's go and create real quickly a speed variable. Say public float, uh, we'll say speed, I'm going to say 5. So let's see, we have our, it says current, which is my transfer dot position. And we want to move to the target, which is what? Destination, right? And we'll give it a speed of 5. And I don't know if we need time dot delta time, so I'm going to just add it in there anyways. I think we do, seeing as it says max distance delta. That's a hint. Delta time. All right, let's go ahead and just test that out. And if I go ahead and run it, did anything work? 
Okay, so it's not working. Why? And it looks like we have a... Oh, ignore that. That's part of the elevator. Okay, hold on. Um, so why isn't it working? Well, let's go ahead and look at it in the scene view. I'm not going to maximize on play here. Uh, and if you look in the scene view, did it move even a little bit? Where is the moving platform? Oh, well here, well, I have two scripts. Okay, so it's 17.749. Interesting. Ah, hold on. The moving platform was not the same values, I don't think. Okay, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. So, what's happening here? So, remember, in our script, we're checking for the current position. If the moving platform position is the, des is the origin's position, which right now it is, and if I start the game, it moves a tiny bit, but then it stops. Why? Because we're telling it to do that. We're saying if the current position of the moving platform is equal to the origin, then we want to say move towards, right? Well, this gets called once, and then next frame does, is this a true condition anymore, next frame? Does our current position still equal the origin position? No, it equals a little bit to the right of it. It moved a little bit. So this function works only if this is a constantly true condition. So how can we do that? We can create like a, a, a switch system, basically, where we use a bool, and if transform.position equals origin.position, the switch is true, and as long as it's true, we do the move towards. And once we get to the destination, maybe it goes false, and if it's false, we move back. So that way it's constantly a true condition allowing you to do this. Um, so let's go ahead and look at an example of how we could do that. So let's create like a, uh, let's create a bool for switching. So we have a private bool switching. All right, and we're going to say set it to false. All right, by default it's false. So private bool switching, how can we use this? So if my transform.position equals origin.position, then let's go ahead and say, Go ahead and copy this line. Let's go ahead and say switching equals true. And what do we want to do if switching is true? Come down here and create more pseudocode. So you have if switching equals true, then we want to move towards uh, move towards destination. And then you have if if switching equals false, what do you want to do? Move towards origin. So I'm going to go and do the first one, and I'm going to let you guys finish it up. Um, so here we go. So if transfer not position equals destination, move to origin. So if switching equals true, if switching uh, equals true, we're going to say um, we're going to say that line that I copied. My transfer position equals move towards the current position to destination, and then once it's there, what do you need to do? You would have in your if statement here. Instead of if transposition with destination, you would say switching equals false if it equals to destination, and you would go back. So let's go and just test this and see if it actually works. All right, there you go. It's going to keep moving, and it stops there. So now I need to get it to come back. And doing that is just simple logic, guys. It's literally um, if if current position equals destination, switching equals false. And then you have an if statement. If switching is false, move towards the origin position, not the destination. And that will allow you to do that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and finish it up. I'm going to let you guys do that part on your own, and then we'll discuss the next step. Okay, guys. So this is what you should have as a working result. If you did everything correctly, then this is your result. So we have a moving platform. All right, I'm going to go ahead and jump on that. And I can't, I fall through it. Why did I fall through it? Well, let's look at our moving platform. There's no collider on it. So go ahead and add a box collider, 2D. And you'll see here that's definitely way too big. So I'm just going to go ahead and shrink it down some. All right, and then size doesn't have to be that big. All 
All right, there we go. That's better. Now we have a collider on it. So let's go and test it out. Can I go? All right, there we go. So I can land on it, but what do you notice? I don't move with it. I have to constantly run with it, and I, I fall off. I can't. I don't get. Basically, I'm not staying with it. Why not? So what we need to do basically is when I hit it, I should move with it, right? So the way we can do that is by parenting Tim to the moving platform so that he moves with it. But that also means that we have to unparent him when he jumps off it. So how could we possibly do something like that? Well, we're dealing with collisions, right? We can check for a collision. If I collide with that game object, then why not parent Tim to it? Or, and when I jump off it, I set the parent to null, meaning no parent, because Tim typically doesn't have a parent. You can see here he's by himself as a, as a player. So how could we do something like that? Let's go ahead and use the collision system in Unity. We, we're familiar with on trigger enter, but we can't really check for a collision because we don't want to on trigger enter because we don't want to fall through that platform. We want to stay on it. So we're going to use on collision enter. All right, so let's go and open up our script here. And let's go and create the logic for it. So open up moving platform. And down here, uh, we are going to have, let me close that up. All right, so down here, we're going to have um, void on collision enter. All right, and it's called 2D because we're working in 2D. And just like on trigger enter, it has a parameter that we pass through. And you can just check the scripting reference. This is nothing new. Uh, on collision enter 2D, and it uses the collision 2D class, which is this, collision 2D, and give it a reference name. I'm going to just say col. All right, usually for, for collider. All right, so what do I want to do now? So this is a moving platform script. And I want to check, basically, so check if player lands. So basically, I'm checking to see if the player lands on me, which is the, which, which is me, like me is the platform, okay? So check and see if player lands on platform. And if that's a true condition, what do you want to do? You want to take, you want to take the object that collided with the platform, which is coal, and get its parent. And you want to set it equal to this game object, which is the same as saying this dot transform or this transform. Because remember, transform is a game object. So we're going to see, we're going to check if the player lands on the platform. We're going to get the collider's parent, and we're going to say it equals this game object. Now that should allow us to stay on him, but you're going to have to create a method to get unparented. So that's when you have void on collision exit. Exit 2D. And that takes a collision parameter as well, collision 2D. All right. And what you can do here is the exact same thing as above. You're going to check if it's the player. So if player leaves, then what do you want to do? You want to get the Cole's parent and set it to null. And you just set it to null by assigning it to null. You can just type that. So you're going to do that. Um, all right. And that, after doing that, pretty much it should work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what it would look like. Uh, hopefully. Let me see here one second. Uh, it doesn't let me collide that anymore. Damn. Okay. So, yeah. So, if you, you should be able to do this part on your own. I'm going to go and stop the video and show you guys the final result of what you should have. Uh, if you have any problems with this, just post it in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching. All right, guys. So, I've gone ahead and completed the code. And basically, what should happen now is I should go with it. Also, if you're checking for the player using a tag, make sure that he does indeed have a player tag. Otherwise, you can just check for the name. Uh, so let's go ahead and test this out and see if the platform works how I want it to. I jump on it, and I'm parented. I move with it, I can move around, I jump off it, and I'm free. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any problems with it, uh, post a comment. If you like the video, like it. Uh, join DGI on Facebook for more videos. Uh, help it get it released by following me on Twitter. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.